And I will just use this minute to introduce to you our team in Mansoor, and this is our hospital, and hopefully one day we are going to see you there. Thank you very much. Now we will shift to uh, our last speaker in this session, uh, Dr. Professor Wafa uh, Aizad. She will talk about it uh, from Ain Shams University. She will talk about transplantation ecodystrophy. Chairpersons, professors, and colleagues, it's uh, an honor and pleasure to be here with you today. My talk is about uh, adrenal leukodystrophy and hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. This is uh, the agenda. We'll talk about the disease, its uh, early diagnosis and prognosis, the role of hematopoietic stem cell transplantation in the management of this uh, catastrophic disease and the screening for early diagnosis of the cerebral type and the neonatal screening. Adrenal liquid dystrophy is an X-linked disease. It got a prevalence of one in 17,000 persons. The defect in the peroxosomal membrane, adrenal liquid dystrophy protein that leads, that uh, results from mutation in the APCD1 gene. This deficient protein lead to impairment of transmembrane transport of very long chain fatty acids into the peroxosomes, the sites where they are degraded. So the very long chain fatty acid will accumulate in the plasma, brain, spinal cord, and adrenal gland, leading to variable presentation of that disease, which is the primary adrenal insufficiency in more than 80% of cases, the myelopathy, and this is an adult onset disease. And the last and most devastating one is the cerebral adrenal leukodystrophy that occur in the childhood onset and representing one third of the, case, of the cases. And this is uh, how the inheritance occur. It's an X-linked disease. When the mother is a carrier of the affected gene, there will be one affected son, 50%, one affected daughter, 50%, and two unaffected son and daughter, another 50%. And when the father is the, um, is the one who carries the affected gene, there will be 50% of the daughters affected and two normal unaffected sons. And uh, the cerebral adrenal leukodystrophy um, causes cerebral demyelination that is the most devastating disease. And they got this clinical presentation and the progression of the clinical manifestation is predictable. Initially, there is peripheral or academic decline that is sometimes misdiagnosed as attention deficit disorders. And then the disease progresses to disabilities of visual, auditory dysfunction, gait abnormalities, episodes of incontinence, pulpar dysfunction, and seizures. Finally, there is functional disabilities, including loss of communication, cortical blindness, um, incontinence, wheelchair dependence, and complete loss of voluntary movement, and ultimately death within two to three years. So, and this is the final picture of cerebral adrenal leukodystrophy. Hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is the only disease modifying agent. It can arrest the disease progression, especially if done very early in the disease. So 
it should be done very early in the disease. And this is the only way to arrest this disastrous demyelination of the prey. By the way, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation do not affect the course of adrenal insufficiency, and we have to replace those patients with steroids. Um, now, we have early to diagnose cerebral adrenal leukodystrophy, especially that is the phenotypes of adrenal leukodystrophy cannot be predicted on high, uh, very long chain fatty acids on the genotype or on the family history. So early diagnosis of this disease is very important. How can we do an early diagnosis? Early diagnosis is with MRI and there is neurological lesion before the appearance of symptoms. So symmetrical white matter lesion is the clue and the MRI for early diagnosis, and it appears before the onset of clinical symptoms. The, if there is MRI findings, so gadolinium enhancement is the predictor biomarker of the rapidly progressive disease. It indicates an active inflammatory changes in the brain. And this is the MRI of the brain with the uh, white matter demyelination bilateral, bilateral symmetrical and the gadolinium enhancement. And we have the Louis uh, MRI severity scoring. We can detect the uh, burden of white matter disease by this score. It correlates well with the survival and neurological outcome of the patient after hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Another scoring system is a neurological functional score. And when it is low, we, it indicates better neurological function. So it will depend on the MRI, on the neurological scoring. And to do hip, uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, in the pre-symptomatic stage. So boys with biochemical defect, that is the high, very long chain fatty acid, should have routine MRI follow-up. And then the MRI follow-up, if there is evidence for cerebral demyelination, then we have to go with the gadolinium enhancement and if it is positive, then this is the time for urgent transplantation before further progression or appearance of symptoms. So annual MRI from year one to year uh, to up to the age of 13 years is mandatory in any patient with adrenal leukodystrophy who is elevated um, very long chain fatty acid and gadolinium enhancement. Uh, another very important and new point is the neonatal screening. And we'll talk about neonatal screening later on. And this is how uh, the MRI lesion appear. And this is adrenal leukodystrophy demyelination of the brain. And now how stem cell transplantation works in those patients. What are the rationale behind the correction and arrestment of the demyelination of the brain? Here we have a hematopoietic stem cell transplantation means replacement of the patient. Poor marrow cell population with a healthy donor marrow cells. In these healthy donor marrow cells, the most important cell that work for this correction is the monocyte macrophages. Monocyte macrophages can uh, differentiate to give the microglial cells in the brain. How it can reach to the brain? It reaches to the brain, it enters the CNS 
via the leptomeningitis, the choroid plexus, and across the blood perimperior, and then differentiate to microglia. And this is one wave correction of the lesion in the brain. The second wave correction of the lesion is the, the expression of the functional ABCD1 protein on this uh, bone marrow cells. So two ways for correction by this hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Here is the stem cell. The stem cell, hematopoietic stem cell, is a pluripotent stem cell, can differentiate into lymphoid stem cell, into myeloid stem cell. And the lymphoid give all the immune functions, all the immune cells, natural killer lymphoid cells, T cell, P cell, and the myeloid progenitor cells give all the blood elements including the monocyte macrophages that will differentiate in the patient into microglia and correcting the CNS disease in those patients. How can we get, and this is a bag of stem cells. How can we get this bag of stem cells? The stem cells is given to the patient by central line and the donor should be fully match it six loci out of six. And we get these stem cells through ephyrosis, peripheral blood stem cells, or bone marrow by collection from the posterior superior iliac spine bilateral in a theater, or from cord blood stem cells from the umbilical cord and the placenta at the time of uh, delivery. And this is safe and no effect on the baby or on the mother. So this is a stem cell. And this is how transplantation is, is done very shortly, conditioning of the patient with chemotherapy to myelo applied the patient and immuno applied the patient to get an empty marrow. And then infusion of hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. The hematopoietic stem cell will be infused on day zero. And after that, we have three stages, the pre-engraftment stage, the engraftment and the post-engraftment stage. In the pre-engraftment stage, about 30 days, we may get infections. After engraftment, we have still, we can get infections or, and other complications like graft versus host disease, venoclusive disease, complications, all types of infection, viral, fungal, um, bacterial, and uh, the boost engraftment phase up to three months, the first three months is the most critical in the transplantation. And after that, the patient um, is in a better shape. And after one year, the manifestation, neurological manifestation of the patient can be started to hold down. The outcome of hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is optimized nowadays because of the early detection of the disease. With the early detection, the outcome is better. And the early detection, as we said before, depends on the neonatal screening that is um, start to be applied since 2016 and the MRI screening that can detect pre-symptomatic cases. The second important point is the improvement of conditioning and the conditioning regimen and the adjuvant therapy to those patients. And this is the how the outcome of hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is good. This is a report in the current treatment options neurology. This is 2019. The outcome, the survival is around 92 to 95 in patient underwent hematopoietic stem cell transplantation with very early neurological deficit with MRI score very low, less than nine. And this paper indicating the benefit of early treating of those patients. And this is another uh, multi-center study published in the Biology of Blood and Marrow Transplantation 2019 about uh, the survival and functional outcome in uh, those patients with cerebral adrenoleukodystrophy after hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. This data uh, collected for 137 uh, patients, 72 of them untreated before 2001, 
and 65% of them treated after 2001 with hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. And they are collected from the US and France. And the outcome here is an overall survival at, at two and five years, about 82% and 74% respectively compared to those uh, not treated, 29%. So the overall survival much differ. And the, the most important idea here in this figures is that patient transplanted very early in the disease got much better outcome than patient transplanted with advanced disease. This is the overall survival and the event-free survival getting low and here it is. So the outcome, with early transplantation is much better than with advanced disease. And we can get early diagnosis of these disease, either um, by prenatal diagnosis. Prenatal diagnosis is applicable in this disease by chorionic vellus sampling um, at around 10 weeks, by amniocentesis around 20 weeks, and we examine for very long chain fatty acid or for mutation analysis. So prenatal diagnosis is visible option. And this is a neonatal screening that is uh, approved since 2016 in many of the states of uh, USA. And it, the, this neonatal screening is important because it detects adrenoleukodystrophy at birth. They are normal babies, but uh, this uh, newborn screening can detect a adrenoleukodystrophy at birth and allowing for the MRI follow-up of those patients uh, yearly to detect them before symptoms. And why they thought about this newborn screening because of the lack of clinical benefit with hematopoietic stem cell transplantation if done in the later stages of the disease. And this is the, the point that emphasize that early diagnosis of cerebral adrenal liquid dystrophy is the one correlated with the most better outcome. And neonatal screening is approved in the green areas, green states of USA since 2016 and um, and the other is going to approve it. Now, adrenoleukodystrophy is a forgotten diagnosis in children with primary Addisonian disease. So any patient presented with Addison disease, you have to follow him for cerebral adrenoleukodystrophy. And this is our case presentation. An eight-year-old boy referred to the pediatric endocrinology clinic with fatigue and the hyperpigmentation with onset at two years, blood test revealed mineralocorticoid deficiency, serum adrenocorticotropic uh, hormones and cortisol concentration were compatible with adrenal insufficiency. And there is elevated plasma level of very long chain fatty acid Genotype analysis reveals the ABCD1 gene, and this is established the X linked adrenal leukodystrophy. Then, follow up with the MRI showed myelination of the white matter. Now we have the cerebral adrenal leukodystrophy, and now we have to proceed to immediate hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, the only available treatment for those patients. Strider replacement is important because hematopoietic stem cell transplantation have nothing to do with adrenal um, insufficiency and together with the supportive care. So please, uh, any patient with primary adrenal insufficiency suspect X-linked adrenal leukodystrophy and follow those patients for the appearance of cerebral adrenal leukodystrophy and treat as soon as possible. And this is my take home message. That is hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is the only therapeutic option that arrests 
Strapural demyelination in adrenal leukodystrophy poise. And it's novel, pre symptomatic approach. Depends on early detection of the patients. And the early detection is important using the MRI annually for those patients. And if possible, implementing the newborn screening in Egypt. And thank you. Thank you very much. دكتورة وفاء عزت وطبعا اللي عشان اللي من بره عين شمس ودكتورة وفاء عزت بايونير في الهيماتوبويتك ستيم سيل ترانسبلانتيشن في عين شمس وثانك يو فور ستيكينج تو ذا تايم